This is a video about functions. First, we'll begin with a relation, which is a collection or set of ordered pairs. And then a function now from x to y is a relation that associates exactly one element of y with each element of x. To break this down a little bit, this just means that x values do not repeat amongst the ordered pairs that are given. Function notation uses f of x, g of x, h of x in place of y. So don't let the notation of functions scare you. The domain of a function includes the x values or input values. The range of a function includes the y values or output values. So x is input, y is typically output. All right, in example one, I give you a group of ordered pairs, and I want to know if each set of ordered pairs is a function. If so, we will state the domain and range. Looking at part A, they give me four ordered pairs. But notice, 1, 4, and 1, 7 each have an x coordinate of 1. So 1 repeats as an x value. So that means it is not a function. That's what we mean by saying x has to be unique. <laughs> Part B, look at the x values, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The x values do not repeat. So this is a function. Since it is a function, we are going to state the domain, and we will state the range. Since there's only four points, we will just list the four x values from the points as the domain. Remember, the domain would include x values only. And then the range are the y values. You have 3, 5, 2, and then 3 again. So we include that within set, bracket, set brackets. 3, 5, 2, this is actually written more nicely as 2, 3, 5. Ordering the numbers is always nice. <clears throat> Next, if we're looking at a graph, we can determine if it's a function using the vertical line test. This means that if we walk across the function or go across the function with the vertical line, we cannot touch more than one point at the same time. For instance, in part A with the circle, I touch multiple points vertically at the same time in many places. For instance, I have negative 2, negative 1, and then I also have negative 2, 5. X is not unique. That's why the vertical line test works. So the answer is no for part A. And for part B, if you go across the graph with the vertical line, well, you never touch more than one point at the same time vertically, so part B is yes. <clears throat> That's what you call a quadratic function, actually. But the important thing is it's a function. Next, all lines are functions except for vertical ones. Those are of the form x equals some number. So in example 3, part a, you have x equals 7. This is a vertical line because it's of the form x equals a number. So the answer is not a function. Part b. It is not a vertical line, so it is a function. y equals 3x plus 5 is a function. Finding the domain and range of each function, or of each graph, we should say, because part A is not a function. Remember, the domain would be x values, the range would be y values. We want to give the answer in what is known as interval notation. So here's the trick. To find the domain or x values, which the graph is defined, you look at the furthest left point of the graph. What's the x value? Negative 5. And look at the furthest right point of the graph. What's the x value? 1. So negative 5, comma 1, enclosed within brackets, because you have points at negative 5 and you have a point at 1, that would be the domain. The range, how low do you go? In terms of y values, remember, range, you need to be in y mode. So negative 1 is the lowest you go vertically. And the highest you go would be a y coordinate of 5. 
So we enclose within brackets because there are actual points defined at those y values. Next, part B. Remember, the domain would be the x values, the range would be the y values. <clears throat> so how far left do we go? Well, let's look at part B. We have arrows. This left side arrow has both leftward and upward direction. The right arrow has both upward and rightward direction. So the furthest left you go, well, since there's an arrow going left, it's negative infinity. The furthest right you go, since there's an arrow going right, it's positive infinity. And you always put parentheses around infinities. Range. How low do you go? Well, the lowest point has a y-coordinate of negative 3. And how high do you go? Well, arrows with upward direction mean that you go all the way up to infinity. Parenthesis around infinity, bracket around negative 3 because there is a point at the y value of negative 3. So that's finding the domain and range of graphs, one of which was a function and one of which was not. <clears throat> Next, we can evaluate functions at x values. For instance, example 5, f of x equals 3x squared plus 4. If they want you to find f of 2, that just means in the equation, let x equal 2. So this means I have 3 times 2 squared plus 4. That's 3, order of operations, 2 squared is 4, plus 4. Multiply, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4. You end up getting 16. Part B, f of negative 1. Be careful here because you're squaring x. That means you have 3 times x squared or 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4. <clears throat> that means I have 3 times negative 1 to the second power is 1 plus 4. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 4, which is 7. Example 6, same process, except we have g of x equals 2x minus 1. So when you see g of 1, it means in the function g, let x equal 1. So g of 1 is, well, 2x minus 1, that's 2 times 1 minus 1. That's 2 minus 1. That is 1. Part B, we're going to let x equal negative 4. g of negative 4, that's 2 times negative 4 minus 1. That's negative 8 minus 1. That's negative 9. So that's how you find function values. And last but not least, if you plug a certain value into a function, and then you get a certain value out, well that value you input is the x-coordinate, and that value you got out of the function it's called your output value. For instance, if f of 3 equals 7, then 3, 7 is on the graph of the function f. So for instance, example 7, write each of the following as an ordered pair. Part a, f of 12 equals negative 1. Yet this means that your input is 12 and your output is negative 1. The ordered pair would be 12, negative 1. That is all. Part b, h of negative 3 equals 6. The ordered pair would be, well, inputs negative 3, output 6. So not much work to show there at all, but it's an important concept that what's in the parentheses is input, and then the number on the other side of the equal sign is output. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.